Now, we didn't come to this year's uh, PAX East, but he did again. Here's Aaron, YYR Games, and he is here at New York Comic Con. Nice to be here. Now, I know what it's, it's been like, like a year and a half since we last saw you. How have you been since then in terms of YYR Games? Well, um, I haven't really released much, but um, I've been working on a lot of stuff. Um, I've also tried to maintain a social life and work at my full-time job, but, you know, you'll be seeing some releases from me soon, and I have two of them here with me today. Yeah, the Snake 361, we're going from 360 to 361. Yes. I was expecting three, uh, three, uh, 720, but what can we expect with the addition of one to the game? Well, that one adds a lot, actually. The original had four-player battles with the suffocation modifier, and also um, it had a 300-level campaign. But I think the most criticism I got on, uh, you know, Snake 360 in general was that, for the most part, it was Snake. It was just a lot of it. With Snake 361, I expand the actual gameplay a lot. Uh, the battle mode now has six additional modifiers besides suffocation, all of which can be turned on at one time, which completely transforms the game. The campaign now has levels that grow along with you. Um, there are multiple survival modes, including an interesting one where you change direction every time you take a target. Um, there is a challenge mode with a hundred separate challenges. Fans of games like Super Meat Boy, where you just, you know, get these ridiculously hard things to do that require a hundred tries to complete, they're gonna love it. Love it. Um, with over a hundred challenges to complete. Uh, there's gonna be everything from experience and, and leveling and unlocks to um, an extra multiplayer mode called Cannonball Run, which kind of blends Snake 360 with Bomberman, an entirely new campaign along with the old one. It's like, there's gonna be so much to do. A level editor, you'll be able to trade created levels online. There's so much to do that it will, regardless of what I price it at, there will be enough content to justify the price. Sweet. Now, going from there, since you pretty much explained the whole game, <laughs> uh, I wanna to talk to you about Mostly random games. What? How did that happen? Honestly, a lot of what sells are these fun little, you know, games that are meant to be played for maybe, you know, a half hour, an hour long, and they got these funny little gimmicks. So I wanted to try my hand at that. Of course, it's not going to be entirely like, you know, play it for 15 minutes and throw it away because I, I can't put out a game like that. So there's a survival mode and some other stuff in there too. But my first title in that's in this line is going to be called Bungie Ferret Tossing. Bungie's Ferret Tossing's Explosions. How did that come about? Well, actually, it was inspired by some uh, buddies of mine. If you go to orangeloungeradio.com, uh, you'll find out more about them. You can also listen to them on allgames.com every Sunday night. And uh, the three hosts, basically, they talk about random stuff. And every now and then, they come up with a dream game idea. And so they, they threw around a few things, and they came up with the name Bungie Ferret Tossing. They didn't go beyond that, but they're like, hey, we know an indie game developer. Get on that. And of course, they were joking. This is back in 2008. Oh. So, you know, randomly I decide, you know what? I think I will get on that. So I decided, let's make it okay. There's terrorists. You got to strike them with this, you know, stealth helicopter and the most advanced ferret weapons technology. They're swinging from a bungee cord. Let's do this. I, we were played a little bit of it before this, but how many levels and like excursions are we going to have to deal with this? Huh. Um, Bungie Ferret Tossing is just a five level game. Um, at first it's just, you know, they come at you with pistols and you have just ferrets that explode on contact. But by the end of the game, you'll find that they've hired ninjas. They have rocket launchers. They have uh, chain guns and, and rifles and they can hide in the ground. But at the same time, you'll also have proximity ferrets, timed ferrets, and the almighty cluster ferrets. And uh, this looks like a big cluster ferret, if you ask me. <laughs> Well played, well played. But uh, And then at the very end, you'll find that they've reverse engineered the ferret weapons technology. Oh, no. You know, they figured out it was a ferret with dynamite strapped to it. You know, and, and you'll find, you'll have to face something so fearsome that you may just want to cringe and turn away. Awesome. Now, you've been working on Xbox Live Indie Games for a couple of years now. At yep. least, at least it. If you had the chance to modify what it is now, what would you do, like, what would be your top priority? Um, actually, there's one thing I would have liked them to do. We get, as creators, every time a game of ours is released, we get 50 promotional codes that we can give out to reviewers, to lucky gamers who, you know, win a Twitter contest, whatever. And um, unfortunately, beyond those 50 codes, right now, we can't buy more. We have no way of getting more. 
So I guess it would be nice if we could, you know, Microsoft takes about a, approximately 30% of the revenue that we take in for selling the indie games. So I guess one thing that would be nice is if we could just give them their cut and get additional promo codes. I think that would be one thing that I would like the most. What about such like venues as like other indie things like the App Store? Is there anything interesting for that? Or are you looking at that for YWR games or well, any of that you, nature? I'll tell you something. Um, the first thing I'm going to try is I'm porting my game Sharpshooter to Windows Phone because it'll it'll take to it very well. It uses the touch screen for, you know, poke, poke, poke. I'm shooting at things. You know, it's very intuitive. You don't have to explain it to anybody. A lot of my games, unfortunately, like Snake 360, for example, they require the kind of precise control that you just don't get with a touch screen. So a lot of my games don't translate very well to phones, but um, I'm, I am going to do my best to explore mobile platforms. After Windows Phone, I'm going to probably try and port Sharpshooter to Android, you know, for example. iOS is a beast, all right? Because not only would I have to learn how to do, you know, Objective-C and, and learn how to program for the iOS platform, which is quite a bit different than your standard run-of-the-mill Java or C Sharp, but you have to be very, very lucky to make any money on the App Store. You know, honestly, I'm not that lucky. I've showed it two PAX East, I'm showing here, and all I want is, I know Kotaku is here, I know a lot of the big video game blogs and big sites are here, IGN, I know they're here. All I want is for one of them to come over one day and put something on their website about me, and it has not yet happened. So, you know, and honestly, doing something like this, just being a small indie developer, it is not a commercial success. Most of this money is just going towards me getting to experience lots of people coming and playing my games and having a great time. And you know what? To me, that alone is worth it. When can we expect these two games to emerge for us to enjoy them? Bungie Ferritossing, I'm going to do my utmost to have it out as soon as possible. It's a little rough around the edges. There's a lot of programmer art in there that I'm going to try and either improve or replace, but I will definitely have it out by the end of the year. And that'll be a dollar game. And uh, Snake 361, there's a lot left I have to do with it, um, and I am not releasing it until it's complete, but I'm targeting spring. Awesome. Can't wait to try them out and any more mostly random games here. Try them out. You can get four of them right now on Xbox Live Indie Games.